Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Boozer. I'm with CUGC HQ and I am so happy to welcome you today to our CUGC Connect with Flexible IT. We're going to be talking all about the intelligent way to transform and manage multi-cloud digital workspace apps. But before we get into that today, I want to go over a couple of things. We are recording today's presentation and you will receive a link to the recording in email tomorrow. That email is going to come directly from GoToWebinar, so just be on the lookout for that. Um, also, I want to let you know you can submit your questions anytime during the presentation today. We're going to save almost all of the questions, I think for the end of the presentation, we have a lot of demos and a lot of stuff to get through, but do type your questions in as you have them so, um, so that we can have them and we'll get to them all once, uh, once he's wrapped all that stuff up. And finally, um, I will be giving you a link in the chat window towards the end with a, a link to the survey, and that's just for CUGC use only. We always like to get your feedback about our webinars. It helps us plan future content and, and future webinars. All right, so who's with us today? We have Jake Walsh. He is a CTA, and uh, he's going to be keeping an eye on the questions for us and moderating those today. Jake, would you like to say hello to everyone? Yeah, hi everyone. So, um, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, yeah, so my name is Jake Walsh, um, CTA based in the UK. Um, kind of predominant um, work for me is um, Zen Apps and Desktop, Netscaler, more and more Citrix Cloud, and more and more um, Azure based workloads. So, um, quite a mixed bag. But uh, yeah, I'll be moderating this and uh, keeping an eye on the questions and then picking out um, all the interesting ones to ask at the end. So, if you have got any questions uh, as we go through, I'll uh, try and answer those. But um, other than that, just uh, enjoy. Thanks, Jake. All right, and presenting for us today is Guy Leach. He's an end user computing consultant and a, he's also a CTA and you've probably seen him at some CEGC events. Uh, I think most recently, Guy, you might have been at the UK group. I can't remember where I saw you last on Twitter, but I know I've seen you at some of our events over there. Um, I'm going to turn things over to Guy now and let him get us started and then we have a lot of stuff to get through. So Guy, I'm going to send you the screen right now. Great, thank you. Let me just uh, show mine, get the right one. Great. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I have to say thank you, Stephanie. I'm Guy Leach. Been in the EU space now for 24 and a bit years since Citrix Winframe 1.5, I think. Um, still working with a lot of um, Citrix end users, Citrix vendors as well, hence my association with Flexible IT, where I'm helping them develop their apps to digital, which uh, I'm going to show you now. So a few slides just to sort of set the scene, tell you about Flexible, the background, what the product does, and then a, a live demo, of course. And live demos never go wrong, do they? So that'll all be uh, all be fine and dandy. Okay, so let's move on. So who are Flexible IT? Uh, a a, a well-kept secret, for unfortunately. Uh, of the Citrix Ready Partners, there are only six in the world, and uh, Flexible IT are proud to be one of those. So, work very closely with Citrix and Citrix product managers. So, founded in 2008 as a as desktop as a service provider, so uh, managed hosted desktops predominantly uh, in Spain, but then decided to productize some of those offerings. Headquartered in uh, just outside of Barcelona, uh, offices around the world and you notice here now more than 400,000 users of, of the solution so uh, a good testing ground for these products and also you know, customers who've used these products actually increase their Citrix licenses which uh, yeah, may not be good for budgets but certainly um, great for Citrix and their partners so on the Alliance side of things I'm say the Citrix ready um, leadership there with only one of only six companies in the world uh, strategic alliances we'll see some of the products uh, not necessarily what's shown today uh, do require some hardware some hyper converged appliances so some partnerships there and we're also uh, partnering with IBM to help provide their desktop as a service 
and OEM partnerships with uh, these folks here, including people like Login VSI, so that's integrated uh, into one of the product sets. I'm not going to read out uh, slides word for word. So back in 2012 uh, is when they start to productize what uh, what they've been using for their many desktop as a service users, customers, uh, and then the uh, flexible workspaces product came out. So either on your own hardware or buying flexible hyper-converged appliances, you can take a couple of these servers, put them in a rack, put a few parameters in, and within a few hours, you'll have a fully working Citrix infrastructure. You have delivery controllers, storefronts, VDAs, uh, Active Directory, which you can manage all from a single pane of glass rather than lots of different consoles from lots of different vendors. And then 2019 is when apps to digital came around, which is what we're going to be drilling into here. Okay, so agenda wise, why do you need it? What is it? How does it work? And live demo, and then you know, what next? How do you guys uh, get to look at it? Okay. So tagline we'll see on a few slides, and this is the thing really to remember about apps to digital, it's getting any app into any cloud easily as well. That's the important thing. So helping to migrate apps from you know, on-premises, so you know, locally installed apps, you know, whether they're installed manually, whether they're pushed out by good old uh, SCCM or other deployment methods. Uh, you know, some companies will know exactly what apps from what machines, a lot of companies won't. We'll help in that respect, as you'll see. So we can put out a discovery process, and then as soon as you, uh, as soon as you have this information, we can start to capture and push those applications out into the cloud, and where they can be consumed by obviously a myriad of different devices. It just simplifies application deployment. Yeah? So rather than you having, if you whichever cloud you choose to use, whether it be Azure or Google or Amazon, potentially without this, you'd need to get specialists in those areas, as well as Citrix specialists. Here, again, using you know, uh, Flexible IT's proven management console, you know, we can do everything via a single pane of glass with a lot happening behind the scenes just to, to simplify everything. So it just helps adoption of you know, Citrix and particularly this multi-cloud where you know, a lot of the world is going, but we also work on premises as well. So this is the, your, your typical sort of project without apps to digital. So you, know, you look at it, you know, the, the assessment of what apps have we got out there, that can be very difficult. You, know, you might say, okay, yeah, we're managing it all, but are you really managing it? Particularly if you know, some of you users have got admin access so they can put on what apps they want. But then, unless you know what you've got in terms of you know, being able to centralize and size hardware and any new licenses can be quite tricky. And then even the onboarding is a case of, okay, well, where, how do we install these applications? Where do we put them? How do we manage you know, rolling out and what well, UAT and, and then it's rolling out? You know, a lot of phases, a lot of complication. So along comes Apps to Digital. To, to help with that, so we, as you'll see, we have the discovery mode, so we can go out, put a very uh, small agent, uh, or in fact even agentless if you want, to see what's in your existing estate, bring that in, again, all in a single pane of glass, which we'll see in the demo, and then start to use um, drag and drop methods, really, to uh, use uh, PowerShell, but you don't need to be a PowerShell developer. We're just using you know, existing modules that you know, people like myself have developed in the community to, to install uh, you know, whatever applications it needs to be, whether it's you know, your very common Office, SAP, Adobe Readers, Google Chromes, et cetera, or whether it's you know, very, very bespoke uh, you know, line of business apps in your particular uh, organization or you know, sector. And then once we've got them in, we can manage them all, deploy them all, again, all from this you know, single pane of glass from a browser, wherever, wherever that be. So again, what, what are we really solving? We're just making it simple, yeah? You know, where we sometimes talk about the keep it simple approach, the KISS approach, you know, this is the make it simple approach, the miss approach. So let's see the various stages. 
not my PowerPoint slides, these are far too fancy for me, but uh, again, just to sort of take us through and set the, set the scene for the demo. So the first piece is you know, what is out there. So that's where we've talked about the, the inventory agent, which I'll show you in the start of the demonstration. I've got it running on my laptop. Once we've got the inventory, then we have the, uh, the apps to store. So this is uh, effectively an Azure tenant, uh, flexible ITs, so that manages all this, it uses a database. Again, we'll have an architecture slide shortly to show you how it stores the details of those applications. And that's where if we see at the bottom, we store these formulae, which is basically just a list of uh, instructions. We have download this media, run this, create this, copy that. Again, all through drag and drop, so no scripting required at all. And then you know, we push it out, first of all, for UAT. So to get, like I said before, any cloud, quite quite happily. So no re knowledge required of you know, these particular cloud platforms at all. Just done through the, you know, as we'll see in the demos, we're going to just select a particular cloud that I've got, that I've set up, and I can just push it out to those. And then the adoption, basically turn off those local apps and, and move to the uh, purely cloud delivered ones. And again, still manage them and the users and the sessions from uh, Flexible IT Console. So in terms of the, the architecture, the, the blue is the Flexible IT Azure tenant. So that's where you have the database is that keeps that apps to store database, uh, the various uh, APIs that the, the web consoles interact with. Uh, again, using Azure authentication, so you can get 2FA if you want to. Uh, and then our inventory agents reporting the, the information in, so we can see what's actually already running, both in terms of you know, application versions, uh, how much memory they're taking, vendors and so on. So it helps to identify unknown applications. And then we have our, you know, the various clouds. So we have you know, Citrix Cloud Connector, so we can uh, you know, create these applications because again, as we'll see, this goes into effectively just an extra tab in storefront. Because again, you don't have to worry about the publishing of these applications, you know, so you don't need to go to studio or anything like that. All the applications are installed for you and automatically provisioned via Citrix Cloud to uh, AD groups of your choosing. But still with a, an on-premises element if, if you require that, and, and this is Pretty much the same sort of thing again, to be honest, but, uh, perhaps in a slightly different format. Notice down here we've got the, the golden images and we'll be using those today. So that could be you know, Server 2016, Win 10, single user VDI, could be uh, WVD. I guess everybody's heard about WVD. It's about the hottest topic in the EU C space at the moment and we're very much compatible with that. And, and obviously this connector out to Citrix Cloud is pretty important as well to be able to uh, create and manage those applications. So glossary of terms, uh, hopefully all fairly uh, self-explanatory. Uh, formulae, formulas are you know, like recipe based. So in case of, as we'll see, I want to download this particular executable from this URL, or I want to create this folder, or I want to run this MSI, or run this XE, or run this script, or, and a formula consists of one or more what are called commandlets. So not commandlets in the, in the PowerShell sense, which is a single command, but a effectively a script, and we'll, we'll see those in the demo. And I think pretty much everything else is yeah, uh, self-explanatory there, but I've said the, the slide deck will be available and the recording afterwards. So that's sort of a whirlwind through, tour through uh, Flexible IT. So now let's actually look at the console. So let me just get it ready. Move my web browser over using the new uh, Edge-based Chromium, but yeah, work, work with any browser. And let's full screen that. So I've yeah, previously, well, in fact, let's take it from the top. So again, Microsoft sign in. Uh, I've not set 2FA on them this again because it's a it's a demo. Actually, access to multiple customers. It's, uh, I can use our demo tenant. So that's our that main screen. So the dashboard of the uh, console that we can see there. 
sorry, just let me have a sip of water. It is only water, honest. And so let's look at the inventory side of things first. So inventory, you can see we've got eight endpoints. It's telling us which ones have uh, reported in recently. So let's click on endpoints. So we can see various ones, IP address, users, when they're connected. So this one, Contozo, is my laptop. So I drill into that one and we can see you know, it's, uh, it's a hex core multi-threaded Dell laptop uh, using the latest workspace uh, receiver version, A to D agent. And then we can see the uh, applications that it's reported back as having found. Uh, so those are my, sorry, those are my historical sessions there. And then we can see the apps that I've run in the, you know, since the agent last reported. You can see we can sort on RAM, uh, look at that. Google Chrome taking a lot of memory. I guess that's a shock to uh, nobody. And we can obviously sort by uh, different names. We can search as well. Obviously, we could uh, be looking at this across all of our users as well to see what applications are used, you know, which are most used, you know, which versions of applications have we got have we got out there. In terms of the agent itself, let me just bring Task Manager over. So there we can see the agent. I keep Task Manager paused so that it uh, keeps a low impact on my system. So I'll just F5 that. Yeah, we can see all oh, used oh nearly a minute and a half of uh, CPU since I last booted. So not not particularly uh, hungry in terms of resources. It actually records to a, a, a local JSON file. So if you did actually want to look at uh, the, the JSON file, you know, you, that I've set my uh, file, my, my output file up to be there. This is what gets uploaded, which is oh good old JSON. Yeah, that makes make, makes a lot of sense. But of course, if we use PowerShell, not that you need to do this, but you see we can very easily just turn that into a, a nice grid view, and we can see what applications. So we can see what data is going to be sent up to the uh, apps to digital Azure tenant. So those are all my applications which have been discovered and I can slice it and dice it, you know, looking inventory at you know, the users here. Uh, the classification of apps as well. So if you see up here, for instance, I've got three applications to categorize. So when new applications are seen, it will come in and ask me to, uh, you know, these executables, I don't know what they are. I couldn't get information on them. We, you know, can you categorize them, please? Um, so those of you who know my history will know I been involved with Ivanti was absence for many years, so I've been running Axe um, Zen Center, yeah, uh, obviously for for Zen Server, and uh, another tool I've been using today from Avanite. We'll just call that internal, so I can submit all those. So I've now classified those apps, and if you look at apps and go, oh, I don't know what that is, then that's where you can you know, go out. You can find out what machine it was on, who the user was, talk to them, or you know, obviously we don't like talking to end users necessarily and then go out to uh, you know, department heads or whatever else to find out. We can see what operating systems. So we're not trying to compete with you know, traditional inventory products. What we're trying to do is get in the applications which are running to the uh, apps to digital mechanism so that we can then start to get those applications out into the out into the cloud. So the next stage then is we look at the yeah, the app store. So this is where the uh, the applications that are uh, brought in through the inventory end up. So you can see we've got there. These are the stages, if you like. So the, the, you know these are my discovered apps. So this is just a, a demo tenant at the moment. These are various apps that have been discovered. So we could look at those and go WhatsApp. No, we're not going to bother with WhatsApp. So we'll just leave that here. In fact, we could hide it if we wanted to, just make it hidden. Just so, uh, no, I've decided I'm not rolling out WhatsApp as a corporate communication tool. Therefore, we'll uh, and we'll hide it and not bother with it again. So once I'm ready to uh, push one of these applications out so that I can actually get it installed, I will drag it across to uh, the planned column. So that I know that I want to start actually making some plans around making it available, you know, get some test users lined up. And just to save time, I've already created one called Google Chrome Guys Demo, which I've moved into the 
process column ready to ready to be processed so let me just show you the the details of this um, so what we've got is you know what am I going to call it we could have version numbers in obviously come up potentially come up with a naming convention how am I going to deploy it you know I'm going to point to virtual apps am I going to uh, you know automatically create a, a Citrix app layer for it am I going to actually automatically sequence it and produce an app v package uh, MSIX, of course, the, the, another hot topic in our EU space at the moment. So here, if I'm just going to choose Citrix Virtual Apps, I could put a, a very meaningful description in if I wanted to. I can get it to automatically create the group, that's AD group, that's going to be uh, you know, created and given access to it via you know, Citrix Cloud. Uh, formulae, this is where we'll come back to shortly. So this is the formulae for this, I'm using Google Chrome latest. So I'll show you what uh, that consists of and shortly. So when I'm actually running this, we'll, uh, we'll go back and can look at the, these formulae. And then I, then I pick a cloud. So again, this is the, you know, where, where do I actually want to, uh, you know, where are my VDAs effectively? And again, just some test ones we've set up here. So I've set up this Azure one, this particular VM image, and we'll go and have a look at that one in a moment. And it's it's ready to go. So if I go and pick the go and get the RDP window, just, oops, just to lose it. Uh, where's it gone? It's there. I forgot to minimise everything in my demo preparation. Let's just go and. Minimise everything, or well, marks as the case maybe. Let me just get rid of some of this stuff. Sorry. So if we look at uh, good old programs and features, we can see that Chrome isn't installed. Let's get rid of some of these logs. Yes, I was checking my demos were going to work beforehand. I'm not that brave that I'm just assume everything's going to work. So Chrome's not installed. This is that same machine that I'd uh, put in in the uh, details over here so I'm now going to click start to you know start the deployment and then while that's doing that I will go in and, and show you the formulae so it's Google Chrome latest the formulae that we want to look at so if I go back to the home scroll down slightly and then you can see we've got formulas and commandlets so a formula consists of one or more commandlets. So you can see we've got ones already there. I wrote one for Office 365. So it downloads the latest Office deployment tool, ODT, and uses that to download and then install Office 365. Uh, I've done one for SAP GUI, which actually isn't that interesting, but that's one where we need a custom script. But it also you know, installs prerequisites like uh, the .NET framework. So you know, that's a what we call a commandlet. And then we've actually got the installer itself. So if I go back to the Google Chrome one that we're we're running, search for that in here. So you can see we can have specific versions. So if they write, we must you know, I, we must roll out Chrome 76. Then I can you know, make sure it is Chrome 76 that I download. Or this one that I've written just goes and downloads the latest uh, X64 variant. So you can see we've got three steps. Download the media. So I don't even need to worry about having ISOs or downloading media and that sort of, that sort of thing. You know, that could be download or it could be copy from a, you know, a file store somewhere within your uh, organization. Actually run the install and then delete it. So you can see here we're using, again, using parameters. Those who know MSI exec will know slash QN means quiet mode, no problems at all, no restart, so we don't get any unexpected uh, reboots. And my Chrome installer, which is actually the output from this particular uh, commandlet. And then at the end, being the tidy person I am, just go and delete the uh, the installer as well. So that's the formula for, for Google Chrome. You know, some can be quite involved, uh, some can be quite simple. And then if we actually go and look, so let's go and look at a commandlet for, uh, which one should we look at? Let's look at download. 
so you can see here a bit of PowerShell at the bottom, and don't don't run away screaming if you're not a if you're not a scripter, because the whole point of this is these will be you know, ready prepared building blocks here for you. And you know if there isn't one for a specific application, either you know, the community will provide one, flexible IT, um, or you know, Citrix partners. Where if you look at the see we have these parameters. So I've defined the fact that it takes a URL, a destination file, and whether it gets overwritten. And these are actually then replaced when the script's run by the flexible engine running in the particular image that I've picked. So if we go back now to my uh, inventory, let's go back over here. Let's see how it's actually doing. So it says it's finished. Let's go and have a look at the logs. So we can see if we read, well, it's bottom up if you like. So we can see 3.26.01. It took the first, downloaded the file. It then executed the, uh, the downloaded file, as in ran it. And then, of course, being tidy, we yeah, deleted it. It's only a small installer, but if you're talking about gigs of um install like with office 365 you might just want to make it clean we don't want that polluting our uh, gold image after all keep it nice and nice and small so now if i go back to the vm of course if i was doing this in person i'd show you there's nothing up my sleeve and there's no smoke and mirrors but if i now do an f5 in here then there we go google chrome is now installed uh, and there are logs on here, so it, if something had failed, so if you're putting one of these together yourself to test it, you could look at the logs for, from the apps to digital. And we also have a, a PowerShell wrapper so that you can actually test your scripts with this uh, parameter replacement before you even put them into uh, commandlets and formulae to test. So that's now got my application installed. Uh, let's actually see if it works. That would be a bonus, wouldn't it? Yep. So. Chrome is uh, now installed and is running and is available. So I could then start to think about how am I going to uh, push that out to test users. So let's close that. So if we go back up here now, you can see what I could then do is move it over to the uh, test phase. Have I picked the wrong one? Yes, I've picked the wrong one. That's why a good naming convention is always uh, always a good idea. Oh yeah, and there we go. So that will be made available. So once I've you know, click save on that, that will be made available to the AD group that I've told it to uh, go and create. So we're going to create that automatically, and then push that out into. Um, Citrix, Citrix Cloud, so that group will actually be able to uh, actually able to test it. So if we go back now to Storefront, uh, which is obviously timed me out. So this is a uh, you know, traditional Citrix Storefront, but with uh, some extensions. So you can see typical apps. This is actually how I get uh, an RDP session into my machine that I've just showed you being installed but of course if everything goes to plan you don't even need to get access to that machine because it will all happen automatically this is why this stuff you know scales very well it doesn't necessarily need you know uh, hands-on app experience and then if we go to the app store oh it was all going so well wasn't it folks yes so what should be seen here and uh, now let me see if I've got a slide with this in. So I am using a demo tenant. So if somebody's probably made a change, which uh, a breaking change, we say. So let me go back to the slide deck. I should find a picture of what we should have seen. Uh, and these are in the slide deck as well. Obviously, there's a recording, but there we go. So I'm, I, I'm good with uh, technology, but I'm not great with uh, PowerPoint. Just, just lost my slide again. Great. 
can sometimes see why people do recorded demos, but that's just not my style. No, still, still got the wrong slide. Okay, just talk amongst yourselves while I uh, try and be more competent. Yeah, awesome guy, well done. Right, let's do it a different way. Yeah, put that on the feedback, needs to learn how to use PowerPoint. Okay, so that's what we should have seen in the demo, in the this extra tab, the apps to store, is the applications that me as the logged in user, AD Group permission wise, actually has access to. So these will have automatically been created by the apps to digital back end in the Citrix cloud, in your Citrix cloud, and then obviously then assigned to machines that you again you've uh, you picked earlier in some of the in some of the other screens. Oh, it looks like somebody has decided to roll out uh, WhatsApp. Although of course this could be a, a pre-prod or, or UAT, so we can set different groups for those as well. And uh, then good old Slack and Teams. So that's what we should have seen in the uh, in the demo was uh, this nice tab. So if we go back to the dashboard. Just bear with me a moment. Get that screen back up. So let's go back to the dashboard. I think that's pretty much covered everything. Uh, oh yeah, and the other thing we would have seen in that uh, screenshot was the, the capability to uh, vote for applications. So if I can go to previous slide. So you've seen, you notice this vote button down here. Um, so we, in the test environment, you say, okay, well, how many app users actually want to use this so they can actually vote for it? So if nobody's voted for an application, as long as it's not a mandatory one, then well, don't roll it out. But once it has been rolled out, notice that it changes to subscribe. So I can then um, put in a request to subscribe to it. Again, or control via uh, AD groups. Okay, so back to the live dashboard, the live demo. If I can find the right window. Good old Chromium Edge or Credge. So we can... Okay, we won't go there. And so there we can see the results of the voting. Obviously this is a, a test tenant, so not many people uh, voting but a lot of people still want to use Internet Explorer it seems over Microsoft Edge but yeah who uses Edge um, we can set up our cloud connectors and then we can actually see stats this is where we can actually start to manage you know, our actual sessions as well so that I was saying before is this isn't just a way of you know, inventorying and catching apps it's also how we can then roll them out and manage them all through a single pane of glass so no more going to you know, studio or director or any of those sorts of tools pvs consoles yeah just bring it into a single pane of glass something that flexible it have been doing for a number of years with their uh, with their other products so we don't have to switch product sets or consoles it's just all doing it from a single pint again all web browser based so you, you've got a client on pretty much any platform mobile or, or otherwise and if you spread out into other clouds get other tenants we can just you can just add them in and start to push out the applications to those as well uh, yeah okay so I think that's pretty much uh, it from a demo perspective so let me just switch back to the last few slides to sort of wrap things up uh, if i can actually find powerpoint let's uh, go back okay so let's hopefully raise enough interest so particularly people who may, may be battling with uh, good old sccm for for getting applications you know, packaged and out to machines this gives you a nice much easier much slicker way of doing it so in the azure marketplace there is the uh, there is the apps to digital uh, available there 
uh, again, the slide deck will be made available, so you can see the uh, URL, but obviously just search for Flexible IT. So what have we got available? Well, again, there's the Slack channel, so uh, I'll show in a moment how to sign up for that. So this is where you can see you know, who else is using it, uh, share ideas for packaging particular products, ask questions, you know, direct to uh, product management. If you actually want to play with it, then you, know, you can get a free trial. Just um, email in with your details and uh, somebody will be in contact with you very shortly to be able to uh, progress that for you. Okay, so we've reached that point in the uh, in the slot where we can uh, switch to questions answers. Jake, I don't know if we've uh, have we got any questions yet. Uh, we have indeed. Yeah, so we've got one question. Uh, let me just pull the list up. Um, so looking at this product, could we use this to move, for example, um, you know, let's say if we're a customer who has an on-premises environment, could we leverage this to help us migrate to a cloud platform, or would we have to be the first? Um, this this won't create that cloud platform for you, although Flexible IT do have that product set as well, okay. so they, they can actually you know, produce that for you. But yeah, this generally does need to sit on top of a you know an existing cloud infrastructure, Citrix Cloud, either built by you know the Flexible IT uh, product set or you know, a partner or yourselves, depending on the skill sets available. Yeah. Um, and then just so around the discovery phase of um, using this application. So, I mean, how how what would that typically look like? I mean, how long would it last? Is that a long piece? Or is, I appreciate that that's quite subjective. But, um. Yes, I mean, as my typical consultant answer, it it depends. Okay. So if if your users are you know, educated, if that's not a contradiction in terms, <laughs> so that you can yeah then say to them, right, I want you to use all your applications in the next X days or weeks then you can probably run a fairly short sort of you know two week discovery cycle once you've got the agent out there again the agent can either be pushed out through your existing software deployment it can even be run as a as a non-admin so on my desktop being the, the sensible security conscious person i am i'm not uh, logged on as an admin and i've not installed it in its um, centralized mode as in you know, machine install so i've got it per user but it's still reporting back uh, as we saw, so you know, you, you know, users can actually deploy it if necessary. You know, we can actually download it from the uh, from the console anyway. It's one of the screens I didn't show. But if you're a cross organization and you don't know, you know, and you can't say to your users, you know, please run all your apps, then it's how long do you think they'll need? I you know, typically would say at least four weeks because you want to catch you know, start of month and end of month activities for you know sales, marketing, finance, and so on. Yeah, I suppose then it's it's just those risky once a year apps. Um, but then uh, I mean, absolutely, if doing, it would be the same thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So if you have your you know, uh, product champions for internal products already there, then hopefully they they can answer those sort of questions about what what what's run but like i say we're, we're not really trying to compete with the existing inventory products which might go and find statically installed applications but again it's actually very easy to do that with uh, even with powershell um you know this is just a quick and easy and if you like almost free inventory product so that you can start on that journey to uh, moving your apps to the cloud yeah and what about in terms of when when a customer has been through this um, transition? Then I mean the the end result of that. I mean I know from experience normally um, when you actually tell a customer the applications that are in their estate, that's normally a surprise. Oh, I didn't realise. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll still use that. It, it, it's normally something that that triggers conversation and and, and triggers rationalisation as a result. Really. So I mean, are people when they use this, are they seeing? rationalization as a, as a result of, of using a product like this oh very much so yeah um yeah, they think oh yeah that that app's still used and you still get those yeah those surprise looks it's like oh yeah we are we do need to cater for that and that's why i was saying if you remember a few into the middle of the slide deck where you know without this sort of approach 
then it, it's very difficult and you can guess and you can spend a lot of time working on an application that actually nobody uses and then overlook an application that a lot of people use and this will actually tell you what's being used because I said a moment ago about the static analysis it's a case of yeah okay it's installed but does anyone actually use it this is why the you know the the live discovery cycle is that much more important as long as you feel you've had a representative enough uh, time to, to capture what is actually used rather than just what's installed. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose if you go for the, we're going to take everything that's installed approach and it turns out there's, you know, a third of the business has got local admin permissions, then chances <laughs> are you've done all sorts of rubbish across. <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, multiple versions of, of applications yeah. as well. Yeah, which is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> Absolutely. How many? Yeah, how many versions of IE or some things might be very Chrome version specific. And again, we can, yeah, you know, we can cater for all that. We can see who's using what. We can correlate it maybe to you know department via AD group, and then you know, roll out different Chrome versions to, you know, again different AD groups. Yeah. Um, and then just um, one last question, really. I mean, is there any any applications um, that that wouldn't work with this? Is there any anything that you know, it sort of it wouldn't cater for, or that would. I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I'm struggling on this, but um, you know, are there any areas where we would have to look at it manually, or or are there options to sort of work with those more difficult applications? Very good question, and you know, it, it's still early days. We haven't found any yet. What I would say is that you know, particularly if we're uh, automatic wrapping it sequencing in app v then all the you know the usual app v limitations apply you know with you know, services device drivers that sort of side of things but ultimately if you can get the application to uh, install on uh, a citrix vda then we we can control it and the beauty of that is if you have to do some workarounds to get that app to uh, run, you know, make some permission changes to HK Local Machine or program files or, or set some stuff up. We can do all that within the formula via commandlets. So we can all make it, we can make it all self-contained once you know what, what it, you need to do. And that, that, that's the problem is the what do you need to do to make it work is where we can't necessarily help you. Within the product, we can obviously help you as you know, people who've got a lot of experience of getting apps to work in Citrix. Yeah, but then we can take that, capture that knowledge once we have got it working, and just put it into the uh, put it into the formula, so it can just be rolled out automatically. You won't have to manually hack every time, yeah, the installation every time you push it out. Yeah, no, and that's that's powerful in itself because it gives you the commonality. So you know, each time you deploy, it's deployed in, in a uniform. Absolutely reduces the the risk of human error uh, and making a mess of things, which of course none of us have ever seen before. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's um, all for me. That's uh, all. We only had one um, one question um, just around the um, infrastructure question I asked about um, cloud and on premises. So um, yeah, I think we're we're pretty much uh, covered on the question front. Unless anybody's got anything else they want to ask. Great. Uh, no, as I would say, is you know, I've I've been an EUC consultant for ooh, nearly twenty five years now, and I. I, I actually asked to get involved with this product because I see it as quite uh, quite exciting. Yeah, you know, having battled with SCCM to get applications out and battled with different uh, delivery mechanisms. Oh, I'm going to sequence that. Oh, I'm going to SCCM that. Or I'm going to locally install that. And I just bring, brings it all back into one place. So that's not me with a salesman's hat on. That's me with a, uh, a tired EUC consultant's hat on who wants to just make things simpler for himself and other people. All right. Well, thank you so much. I think um, I guess I'll grab the screen back. It'll be my turn to have fun with PowerPoint and see. Here. I'm sure you can do it much better than me, Stephanie. <laughs> I was about to come on earlier and ask Jake if he could sing while you were while you were doing all that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> all righty, let's see. Here it is. I think you can all see it. Um, so um, I just had one final slide for you guys. I put a couple links in the chat as I mentioned. Um, there is a link to a survey. It's short. It's anonymous. We just like to get your feedback. 
And then I also put a link to our events calendar. We have uh, lots of events going on all around the world. This week was a pretty busy week for CUGC. We had a lot of big meetings. Um, we have one more big event in San Diego tomorrow. So if you happen to be in San Diego, please come out. Um, you can find all that information on our events calendar. Um, and just to remind you, for those of you who opted in to potentially win a $100 Amazon gift card, the winner will be announced on Twitter. So it'll be randomly selected after the webinar and we'll announce who that is on Twitter. So be sure to follow us at MyCUGC and we'll make that announcement and also um, send out a link via Twitter to the recording. But again, you'll get a link in email as well. So be on the lookout for that. And finally, just a reminder, if you're not a member of your local CUGC group, you should be. Um, go to mycugc.org, find your local group and join. They meet regularly, I think once a quarter. Um, lots of good information, lots of great free technical content, lots of um, just great stuff out there and good resources. If you have questions, if you need advice, or if you have advice you wanna give, this is a great place to meet with your other um, Citrix peers and just get together and network and, and make those connections. So all for you. Um, and with that, I just want to thank everyone for coming out today. Thank you, Guy, for presenting. It was a great presentation. And thank you, Jake, for being on and, and moderating and keeping an eye on the questions. Thanks to you both for being here today. Thank you for organizing. Thanks for us. Cheers. No problem. Well, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day and we will see you again at mycgc.org soon. Take care, everyone.